With the skies nearly closed and a war still raging just miles away, hundreds of Christians converged on the Jewish state in a show of solidarity and with an intention to debunk the anti-Israel sentiment that is spiraling out of control. Initiated in 2017, the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast is the brainchild of Albert Vexler and co-chaired by Knesset member Robert Ilatov and U.S. former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman. Annually, influential government and Christian leaders gather in Jerusalem in prayer and in pursuit of solutions to global challenges. The two-day event was divided between a session in the Knesset and the breakfast at Jerusalem's Waldorf Astoria Hotel. There is no other nation that has a right to the land. And so enough of the lies that the Jewish people don't have the right to their own homeland. They do. And so we're here with the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast. There's 40 nations saying we agree that the Jews have the right to their land. But more importantly, they have a right not to be attacked. They have a right not to be murdered. They have a right to be at peace and protected in their own nation. And that's why we're here. We will shout it from the housetops as long as there is breath in our lungs that the Jewish people and the land forever will go together. Never will the Jewish people be separated from their land. The speech is centered around the recent tension abroad, primarily caused by pro-Palestinian demonstrations globally, the ICJ's recent call for Israel to halt operations in Rafah, and the rampant anti-Semitism growing both in the States and in Europe. I want to go in front of the Italian government to express my concerns regarding the lack of action in terms of fighting anti-Semitism. Last year, on November 30th, we organized a seminar to discuss this matter and we went to the Italian Senate to push for a law or revise an existing one. Nothing yet has been done. Italian Senator Simone Pilone, member of the right-wing party Liga Nord, expressed his dismay at the outpouring of anti-Semitism. It is outrageous what is happening in the Western world, where we see Jewish students being prevented from attending their classes in their universities. It is also unacceptable what is happening at the ICJ. Moreover, it is unbelievable that Netanyahu, a fairly elected prime minister of a democratic country, was criticized internationally and put at the same level as Hamas leaders that lead a terrorist group. It is also intolerable hearing from European countries such as Spain, Ireland, and Norway that they are ready to recognize a Palestinian state. It is a threat and a legitimation of terrorism, too. A strong representation from South Africa of Christian leaders who do not align with the government's case against Israel shared their reasoning with the media line. Why we're here? Because we believe this is a window of opportunity to actually show that not everybody in South Africa is actually against Israel. And all, nor are they actually saying that uh, Israel's role is genocidal. At the moment, South Africa has no money to actually even bring the court case. So it's, a, it's an Iran-backed um, whole story. Basically, they have the money because it costs a lot to open up a court case in The Hague, you can't just do it. And South Africa and its government has been bankrupt up till now. So um, we're actually being used for this. Albert Vexler, director of the Jerusalem Prayer Breakfast, sees the hypocrisy in the court's rulings. The International Court of Justice and the Criminal Court also have made steps to, to dismantle themselves and to really undermine their authority because they cannot go against a um, democratic country and ignore all the dictatorships that we have in the world. They never condemned Iran, they have not condemned China, they have maybe somewhat condemned now Russia. Uh, they have not said much about what is going on, the bloodshed that was going on in Syria or in Africa. It's a hypocrisy on steroids. Yesha Tid's member of Knesset, Tatiana Mazarski, has addressed many of the breakfasts and shared with the media line that the media plays a vital role in shaping the narratives. 
I think that the solution to those who oppose Israel is to present news in a proper way, in order to present real facts. We have a war, not only in the field these days, but we are facing especially a lack of objective media coverage of the events. A group of Christian broadcasters came to Israel to do just that. All the evangelical Christian broadcasters, all the Christian media are standing with Israel right now. We've just had a, a uh, group of Christian media journalists come and touring the land. We've brought at least eight solidarity missions and study tours to see what happened to bear witness. And uh, we think, you know, for in the Christian world, the word is getting out there. There is some indifference and apathy, but there are more and more Christians also waking up to the special role Israel plays, places even in our own destiny. Knesset member Mazarski is adamant that Jews and Christians must join forces. The progressive world is based on the common values of both the Jewish faith and the Christian one. So who opposes both of us? Radical Islam. If we do not join forces together, the radical Islam will start to threaten the world like it happened in the 7th century and even now. The Knesset even was testimony to the strengthening of alliances. We are very excited that people from all the nations uh, who are believers in one God, join forces with us in the, in the house of the legislators of Israel, in the house that represents the uh, sovereignty of the people of Israel. And this is very important, and we have to strengthen that. Throughout history, we, had, we faced challenges against those who hated us. We have to, the challenge is to strengthen the forces of those who love us. The silent majority are making a statement that we will stand with Israel against all the atrocities that they have suffered against the, in uh, support of their fight against Hamas and that terrorist organizations must be brought to an end. The October 7th attacks led to opening the floodgates of anti-Semitism. What we've seen is that in the classroom, the students have been taught lies, not just for six months or a year, They've been taught lies for decades, and it's time to push out professors who don't know what they're talking about, and it's time to have true academic freedom on campuses. We no longer see academic freedom on most campuses. I serve on a Christian campus. We do have academic freedom on our campus, but you don't see that in many campuses across the United States. That's why a lot of people are rethinking where they're sending their children, and they should. The elite institutions that everyone bowed down to, the Harvards, the Yales, the Columbias, the MIT, these schools have shown who they really are, what they really are, and they're actually bastions of ignorance. European representatives were aghast at their own nation's response to October 7th. When you see people that are celebrating what happened on the 7th of October uh, with convoys and fireworks in the city of Malmo, it, of course it hurts my heart. And, and to see the anti-Semitism that's growing and, and been under the surface, I think, uh, and now showing its ugly face openly. Um, yeah, so, so I think it's really sad. To Norwegian pastor Anne Christensen, Norway's recognition of a Palestinian state was a disappointing response to October 7th. What we experienced from the, this government, we are saddened and we cannot understand it. What they even did was a deep, deep thing for the Norwegian people that they did not allow our king to bring his condolences to Israel. Alan Christensen's party, the Sweden Democrats, is hoping to turn the tide. Me and my party has been trying to, to withdraw that recognition. Um, and we are also working hard to, for moving our embassy from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem and stop all aid to UNRWA, uh, the, the UN or, organ. Um, so we're, we're doing a lot as a party. I believe that um, the support of Israel is on the rise. I believe that we will see many positive changes. We saw uh, the uh, new government of Holland uh, declare that they want to move their embassy and uh, Heert Wilders uh, who said that he will always stand up for Israel. We've seen how Denmark rejected the recognition of non-existent uh, state. Um, we, we've seen uh, Argentina 
and uh, we've seen many nations uh, s expressing their support. So, at the same time as um, you know, others are, are, are making the negative decisions. We have to focus on the on the good decisions and to encourage the nations to stand on the right side of history. Because there is a right side of the history. Terrorism is on the wrong side of history and whoever supports it will um, reap its horrible harvest. From the Knesset, the Media Line reports.